Continuing Mobile Education for Emergency Medical Services Providers. This is Geriatric Psychosocial Issues, Episode 3, Barriers to Transporting the Older Adult. By the end of this episode, you should discuss some of the reasons why older adults do not wish to be transported to the hospital and understand strategies to sensitively encourage older adults to accept transport to the emergency department. At times, older adults may resist transport to the hospital. Some of these individuals may have capacity, the ability to understand the need to uh, be taken to the hospital. Some individuals may lack the ability to understand why you're there. And you're not going to be able to know for sure, but you can assume that the individual who's resisting going may have an underlying difficulty with capacity. The ability to understand. Um, these individuals are among the most vulnerable in our population and oftentimes these individuals have not sought uh, medical care on a regular basis. Um, many of these individuals have not gone to see their doctor on a regular basis, have resisted um, assistance from home care agencies, and so when you see someone who resists we then need to begin to say, how do we approach those? Decisional capacity is the ability of a person to understand, retain, use, and weigh the information relevant to a decision. The older adult may have many concerns about being transported to the hospital. Among those are Fear that they may not be able to come back to their own home environment. Fear that they may lose their independence. Most um, elders have a desire to age in place in their home. And leaving their home, they may be fearful they won't be able to come back to their home. Um, so fear t seems to be um, an underlying um, concern that I've certainly seen in my years of practice. The other concern um, is, is practical. They may worry about financing. They may be worried about how will I pay for this transport to the hospital? How will I pay for the care that's being provided in the hospital? Um, and, and the key question becomes, who made the call? You know, was it the, the elder themselves who made the call? Was it someone else who made the call? That may help you to understand where some of the, the reasons are in terms of the elder sphere. Um, if the elder has made the call themselves, um, they may have reached a point where they're concerned enough about their health and they know that they're not safe in their environment. Common concerns associated with transport to the hospital include fear of loss of independence or inability to return home, fear of death, and fear of cost to their hospitalization. Um, you know, we certainly as EMS providers come in contact with patients that uh, don't want to be transported uh, in this elder population. And often uh, it's as a result of not wanting to lose independence or not being able or not wanting to be taken out of their home environment that they're used to. Um, that could be an independent home environment. It could be a home environment where they're living with extended family. Um, but that loss of independence is very big to, uh, to these elder adults. So it, it is very frequent, I would say, um, in terms of these patients thinking that they can stay in the home and not wanting to be transported to the hospital to avoid that loss of independence. They also often have the, the feeling that, well, friends have gone into uh, hospitals and never come home. And unfortunately, that is sometimes the case with uh, you know, extended chronic illnesses and, and folks going into the hospital and, and uh, passing away there. Um, so they have a fear that if they do the same and go in to seek care at the hospital, that they may never come back to their home environment. They will lose their independence. Uh, potentially even they will die. Um, they have a fear of that. So seeking medical care uh, can sometimes uh, be impacted. You know, they may just ignore problems uh, rather than acknowledge that they have uh, conditions that could be serious and uh, can lead down the road uh, to not seeking care. When you see an older adult uh, who needs to be transported from their home, and 
and they have difficulty in accepting your advice, probably the most important thing is to help focus on the individual. Understand what their goals are for their care at that time. You know, what's important to them. If they express that they want to feel better, it becomes an open avenue, for instance, to be able to say, as we bring you to the hospital, we'll be able to understand better what's wrong um, and what are the next steps to help you to meet your goals. Um, if you cannot identify what their goals are, you need to think about, does this person have the ability to make the decision? Do they have the ability to um, understand what you're saying? So as you begin to look at it, I would first say, one, is this person safe in their environment? Two, you know, do they have the ability to make this decision and make the, the decision about transport? And if they don't have the ability to make that decision, how else can you help? There may be family there that's available, and family may be blood relatives. Family for the um, elder may also be neighbors. They may not have family. They may have outlived their family, but they may have someone that they trust. So it may be neighbors, it may be someone involved with their spiritual community, it may be their physician, if indeed that they have a physician. So in addition to speaking to the individual and trying to focus on what's important to them, what they value, and using that as the, uh, as the point of moving them forward, and if you can't use that, then reach out to people that they trust because that trusted individual may be able to speak through the phone line and convince them to um, be transported and get the care that they need. You know, I think uh, a lot of the things that we talked about in terms of encouraging patients to go to be transported are, are sensitive in nature. You know, really trying to uh, explain to them the importance of seeking care. You know, before you get to the threats of, you know, bad outcomes, trying to help them understand the consequences and understand the importance of seeking care um, in order to make sure that they could go down that road of enjoying life more. You know, if they're sitting at home and uh, they've been dealing with, uh, you know, chronic issues of not being able to move, and that's why you're being called, you need to encourage them to go get those things managed to be able to get out into the world again and enjoy life. So, you know, trying to be sensitive in that nature with the patients could, could, could work, you know. Um, if not, you certainly need to go down the road of, here are the consequences of your decision not to go and see if the scare tactic, you know, it's the old carrot and stick. You know, we use the carrot first. We want to make sure that we get that patient to the hospital and offer them the carrot of uh, better improved uh, life quality. Um, but if we get down the, the road of needing to give them negative consequences, we have to do that. You know, uh, we don't want to move on to that, uh, but we may have to. Probably the most important thing that I would say to the EMS provider in terms of how to manage that patient in the home who's resisting transport is to first step back and say, let me assess for safety. Is this person vulnerable right now and, in, and really is the situation of danger to them? If the person is unsafe in their environment, then you need to proceed um, to really move forward with uh, the next step. The next step is, will this patient accept the intervention? The intervention that you're looking for is for them to be transported to the hospital. So they, if they accept it, you go down one pathway and it's pretty easy. If they don't accept it, and you really work to try to understand their needs and to be able to reach out to others, the next question you always have to ask yourself is, does this individual have the ability to make this decision? And if they don't have the capacity, they may be ill, they may have confusion or delirium because of an underlying infection, they may not be able to make that decision themselves. And again, as I said earlier, reach out to trusted individuals, to their physician, to family, to trusted neighbors, um, because everyone doesn't necessarily have but that should help you to think through, again, assess for safety, does the patient accept the intervention, and finally, if they refuse, do they have the ability to make that decision? Strategies for encouraging older adults to seek medical care include being sensitive to their concerns, informing them about potential improved quality of life, and informing them of the consequences of not receiving care. 
Also, include others in the decision, such as family members and physicians, and always assess for decisional capacity. After viewing this episode, you should be able to discuss some of the reasons why older adults do not wish to be transported to the hospital, and understand strategies to sensitively encourage older adults to accept transport to the emergency department.